To give you an example of a problem that quantum computers are awesome at solving, there's something uh, called the traveling salesperson problem that you both probably heard of. So it's like, what order should Amazon deliver packages on for every truck every morning? And believe it or not, you know, UPS, FedEx, Amazon, Walmart, Target, large e-commerce and delivery companies can save hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars if you can optimize those routes. Now, to solve that problem every morning for a company of that size will take the world's fastest classical computer something like six or 12 months. So obviously it doesn't work, right? That's not how those companies operate. You can't solve the traveling salesperson problem if you're Amazon or FedEx every day. You have to follow other rules that are less efficient. But a quantum computer with you know 30 or 40 algorithmic cubics could actually solve that problem in minutes. So you could do it every morning for one of these companies. The same sort of power can come to drug discovery, can come to making more efficient solar cells can come to making you know, more efficient fertilizers, as you heard, and of course can come to aerospace, national security, and the battlefield of the future. Quantum computing is actually of vital national security interest, and it is of, I would argue, existential interest in every field of applied science for every industry of significance. Give you one more example, and I'll stop talking for a second, Chris, but like, if you are a large financial services organization or you're a large insurance company, trying to price a portfolio, trying to price risk, trying to drive options pricing, these sorts of algorithms can be done with only 30 or 40 algorithmic qubits, which is something we think INQ will be able to do in probably 2024. So we're only two or three years away from early quantum advantage and then broad quantum advantage when you take on supercomputers is probably only five years away. So this is gonna come up in everybody's life sooner than we think INQ has brought forward the era of broad quantum advantage from where we thought it would be a few years ago from late 2030s to mid 2020s. And this is why the time is ripe to launch the world's first pure play quantum computing company with over $650 million of new fresh capital that we've brought in courtesy of DMY technology. You know, imagine if vaccines happened, you know, in a fraction of the time they do today would have saved a lot of lives, obviously last year with COVID and this year with COVID, there will be future diseases where quantum computing will allow treatments and vaccines faster. It will obviously, you know, help address climate change. So Bill Gates's breakthrough energy ventures was one of the largest investors in the pipe. And the reason they did that is we believe the advances that INQ has made will allow, you know, a number of recipes for climate change, including, you know, more efficient renewable sources of energy, as well as making existing sources, carbon capture, even nuclear fuel processing can be all made more efficient with the right quantum computing optimizations. Now, to, to answer your question on leadership, believe it or not, Peter Chapman, who you saw at the end of the video there is a of INQ and he's uh, hit one of his advisors is Jagdeep Singh, who's the CEO of QuantumScapes. It was another SPAC IPO that's been obviously very successful in the electric vehicle battery business. Also with Strategics, in their case, I believe it was Volvo, you know, a revenue ramp that, uh, you know, really started to hockey stick, you know, in the mid 2020s. So there really isn't an element of business or applied science that quantum computing will not touch and improve because almost every problem can be expressed in an optimization format that is perfect for quantum computing and or that has a lot of permutations that you're sorting through to try and find the best way of doing something, right? So for electric vehicles, the battery example we we're talking about was obviously around lithium battery technology and material science. And believe it or not, even when I was in graduate school, battery technology was a hot area. It's an even hotter area today because being able to store power is one of those one of those fundamental rate limiters in both, frankly, solar power for homes as it is for cars. You know, I, I live in Austin, as you guys might remember. We had a kind of terrible winter storm, as you might have heard a few weeks ago. A lot of people lost power. One of the issues with solar power is how do you store it? Now, Tesla has, of course, batteries that are kind of backups for the home. But if you can improve batteries, as you're seeing here with chemistry in the EV market and the in the pipe deck we published, you'll be able to improve how far you can drive a car, but also how you can store power at home. So future winter storms in Texas wouldn't be nearly as bad if everybody had power because they could store a lot of it at home. And so battery technology, new ways of storing power in different lithium batteries and, and other non-lithium battery technologies can all be optimized with quantum computers. You know, I'm obviously not an expert on battery technology, but I will say that photosynthesis, which is something that we've not been able to model with classical computers, is the kind of thing you can model with quantum computers. Because remember, you know, at the end of the day, atoms, molecules, they are quantum systems. And quantum computers are perfect for modeling atoms and molecules that are quantum systems. Or we're, we're just 
simply much more efficient at it. Another question from the chat. What about mining for uh, cryptocurrency? What could quantum computing do for that market? Yeah, that's it's obviously a game changer, right? So, you know, I talked about RSA and the fact that, you know, you can crack RSA, you know, with 4,000, 4,500 algorithmic cubics. Yeah, I mean, you know, we like to joke. Every year you hear about somebody who like misplaced his or her passwords for their cryptocurrency <laughs> and, and have some huge amount of money locked up. Obviously, at some point in, in the next, you know, whatever it is, X years, we will be able to crack all of those encryptions, right? And so don't give up. Hold on to your account. We'll split the revenue with you in 2028 or whatever it is. If you happen to have some large amount of cryptocurrency that's locked up, you know, when you can crack RSA, you can crack a lot of things. And I think people will be innovating in the cryptography space, but classical cryptography will all be crackable by quantum computing. Only quantum cryptography will ultimately not be crackable by quantum computing. So yes, you know, we've already thought about models, right, where you can use quantum computing time to sort of mine or crack, you know, cryptocurrencies in the background. And I have no doubt some of the early people playing with our systems in the next three to five years are going to be looking for angles there. So happy hunting, everyone. Perfect. That question came from our chat from uh, Yoan. So, you know, great question there.